Hey there, Christopher Fenton over here at Sweetwater. Today, we're gonna be diving in some stereo miking techniques, along with my buddy Luke, who's gonna be playing acoustic guitar for us. As always, if you have any questions on the gear we have in the video, reach out to your Sweetwater sales engineer, and they'll be more than happy to help you out. As I'm sure you know, traditionally, a single microphone has no real way of capturing a stereo field just by itself. It's a single channel of audio with just no real way around it. However, if you have a couple of microphones and a little bit of a setup, it's fairly straightforward to capture a full stereo field in virtually any recording environment. While there are theoretically an infinite number of ways to position a microphone within a studio space to capture a stereo space, these are some of the most common ways of setting microphones up. A stereo spaced pair, XY, midside, and bloom line. Each of these has its own distinct advantages and disadvantages, which we'll get into with each type of mic setup. So the first microphone arrangement we'll take a look at is the spaced stereo pair. It's arguably one of the easiest microphone setups to conceptualize, but if you're not careful with setting this up, you can run into some interesting phasing issues, which might not be desirable. This setup consists of two identical large diaphragm microphones with a cardioid polar pattern set up a distance apart from one another pointed towards the sound source. It's very important that you have the same microphone model in this setup between the two, as you want both of the microphones to react to the audio source in the same way. In this situation, we're utilizing a pair of AKG C414 XLII microphones. They sound phenomenal on acoustic instruments, and the clarity of recording you're able to get from them works especially well on this microphone technique. One thing to mention is that this microphone technique is able to capture a wide group of instruments quite easily. However, instruments closer to the center of the stereo field might sound a bit off as they're captured by both microphones' polar patterns right in the center. Determining the width of which you'd set the microphones is largely dependent on how wide of a stereo field you're trying to record, but the general key is to have the two microphones be equidistant from the center of whatever audio source that you're trying to record. If they're not, this can lead to some phasing issues between the microphones, which in turn may drastically hurt the quality of the recording. So it, you know, Usually is a good idea to have a tape measure handy regardless, but especially for setting up this microphone technique, it's good to have one on hand. Traditionally, I've seen this microphone technique used to capture large ensembles, especially in orchestral recordings. What better way to capture over 40 musicians spread across the stage than a couple of great sounding microphones? All right, well, we're here in the studio ready to do some recording. Again, we've got a pair of C414 microphones here for the stereo spaced pair. It is worth mentioning if you do have a multi-pattern microphone, you have it set up to be cardioid. If you have it omnidirectional, you might get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more noise than you might, might, might have bargained for. For about the 12th fret. Let me move this one out a little bit more. I'm gonna make sure they're pointed at the actual source. Should be good to go. Following the stereo pair, the next microphone arrangement we'll discuss is probably one of the most well-known, an XY pair. Commonly see these used as uh, drum overheads uh, or just sort of for percussion in general. Today, we're gonna be using a pair of Shure KSM-141 microphones in this handy dandy Royer stereo uh, bar. In large part, we chose these microphones just due to how precise these polar patterns are. Typically, you do want to have a cardioid polar pattern for this, uh, this objective. But these microphones are also highly versatile due to their fairly weak proximity effect from a distance, which means you lose a lot less bass roll off as you move them farther away from the sound source. Typically, you'll find the best results with this technique if, again, you select a pair of identical small diaphragm condenser microphones with cardioid polar patterns placed on a stereo bar and pointed at a sound source, either where they converge in a, in a V shape or diverge in an A shape. Both of these have their own unique advantages and disadvantages. However, one thing to mention that is very important with all of these stereo mic techniques is that this one has a very low issue with phase incoherence, probably because they're on a stereo bar and they're going to be getting audio at the same speed. Some of the other techniques, you do have some other issues, uh, but with this one, typically have really good results with phase coherence. The first XY pattern is conversion, which looks like this. Having them converge together at their diaphragms gives a listener a very clear placement of whatever sound source it's pointed at, along with some room ambiance. However, it can be a bit narrow sounding as the majority of the overlap between the microphones is right in the center. If you have a subject that you want a listener to be able to easily place in the stereo field, but still capture some of the room noise, then this technique more than likely may be one to check out. 
The second XY pattern is divergent. Compared to the convergent XY pattern, having the microphones diverge away from each other and the sound source typically gives the listener a much wider stereo field. But it's worth mentioning that the center channel isn't as defined due to the poor patterns not overlapping as much. This miking technique in particular is phenomenal if you're needing to record a wide area or a large group of instruments. So next, we're gonna be doing the XY pair, which again, we have the KSM 141s here. Again, if you don't have a stereo bar for this, highly recommend grabbing one as you really do want these to be locked in the same, same distance from each other. Along with that too, with this, this one specifically, Convergent, want them to be about 90 degrees. One other thing just to mention, because this is a little bit uh, counterintuitive, is the microphone on the left is the right channel, because it's capturing the right audio. The microphone on the right is capturing the left channel, so make sure you have those panned correctly. It's pretty good to go. Next, we're gonna do the divergent pair. So in this case, again, instead of a convergent like a V, divergent like an A, uh, this one will be a little bit wider. I think you have to be a little more careful with the angles, making sure it's actually getting the sound source. But again, if you're trying to get a wide, wide space, this is perfect for you. Wow, what a sound. Wow, what a sound. Next, let's take a look at the mid-side technique. Developed in the very early days of recording technology by an engineer named Alan Bloomline, this microphone arrangement is able to capture the area surrounding a center microphone, give the listener a very clear center channel with a good amount of room ambiance added in with a figure eight microphone right below it. When this was being developed by Bloomline, stereo recording hadn't progressed very far. However, he knew that at some point in the future, stereo reproductions of audio could be a huge thing and something that people would probably want to listen to at some point. Following this realization, he set out to develop a microphone technique that could be theoretically played back in mono or stereo without any phase incoherence. It is important to mention that this microphone technique does require some setup in whatever recording medium that you're using. Traditionally, the mid-side technique again uses a single middle channel microphone directly pointed at the sound source in a cardioid pore pattern and another microphone directly below it with a figure eight pore pattern. As I just mentioned, one crucial step to doing this technique right lies in the DAW. Figure eight microphone, in this case an MA301, has its channel duplicated, hard pan left and right, and then phase inverted. This creates a stereo sound around that center microphone, in this situation an MA201, that is an instantly phase coherent while still giving the impression of a stereo signal. The mid-side technique is phenomenal for smaller groups or single instruments, but does not work as well in larger groups due to the very fairly narrow stereo field that it captures. Next, we're gonna take a look at the mid-side technique. This one again uses two microphones, one in this case a MA201 and it's a cardioid microphone for the center channel to give you again a center channel to actually base your stereo recording off of, and then below it an MA301 in its figure eight polar pattern, which will again give you that stereo field around the microphone, which is gonna be inherently phase coherent, and you don't have to worry about just weird, weird audio stuff with this one. It's probably one of my favorites, honestly. The final microphone technique we'll take a look at is named directly after that engineer I just mentioned, Alan Bloomline. Developed with a similar intent as the mid-side technique, this microphone arrangement uses a pair of identical figure eight microphones arranged 90 degrees off from another to capture as close to a perfect circle around the diaphragms as possible while still retaining as much phase coherence as possible. It's worth mentioning that AEA also has a microphone that has a Bloomline pair directly put together called the R88, but I think it's a little more fun to have a, a pair of microphones to, to mess with. The Bloomline technique goes a little bit further than the mid-side technique in that the stereo field that's captured gives a listener a much more concrete placement in the stereo field and can even feel as if the listener is right in the center of a recording. Because again, you're capturing 360 degrees around these diaphragms. Again, in our example, we're gonna be using a pair of AEA Nuvo N8 microphones, which are phenomenal ribbon microphones with, again, that figure eight pore pattern. Last microphone technique we're gonna look at is the Bloomline arrangement. 
This one especially is able to place a listener pretty much just right in the stereo field, courtesy of those two figure eight pour patterns. Again, picking up about as close to a 360 degree angle around the diaphragm. It just feels like you're right there listening. It's probably one of my favorites, honestly. One cool part and drawback with this microphone technique, again, is how it captures everything around it. So if you're, for example, like a bluegrass group, you know, brunch musicians around a microphone, this is phenomenal being able to capture up everything. However, if you do have a solo act here, like, uh, like Luke, you have to be aware that it will capture audio around. So make sure you're not you know, jangling any keys in the background. <laughs> Always fun to do some recording, and big thanks to Luke for the time. For all you folks at home, we'd love to hear your own thoughts on the different pour patterns, and feel free to comment below what your thoughts are on each of them. As always, context has a pretty large effect on what microphone technique you might select. Personally, I think for acoustic guitar, the mid-side is my favorite. Love having that designated center channel that's clear and defined, and then have the option of the turning on the stereo channels. The XY patterns turned out great too, but I'd have to say that the divergent mic technique left a little bit to be desired, uh, which makes sense as it's capturing a lot more of the room than any of the other setups. I will say, I think if we had a few guitarists here in a room, it might be a bit more effective than just a single solo act, but hey, we're here to show you what, what they all sound like. And I would say if we had a bit more time in the video, it would be fun to experiment with a bit more of the microphone choice as well. Every microphone has its own timbre and reacts to audio in its own unique way. And you might have a solution of your own recording setup that we hadn't mentioned here. For example, I've seen the mid-side technique utilize a ribbon microphone for the side channels, and some people prefer to use a slightly tighter pour pattern as the XY arrangement. Along with that, there are a ton of other ways to set up a stereo recording, including the Decatree, Near Coincident Pair, AB Stereo, the list goes on. It's all highly dependent on your own recording situation, and as always, your Sweetwater sales engineer will be more than happy to help figure out the best microphone choice for you. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. Feel free to like, comment, and share the video. And if you do have a stereo recording technique that you've used in the past that we didn't cover here, comment and share it below.